This is lesson 6-2, which is exponential models. Our essential question is, how can you develop exponential models to represent and interpret situations? So this is kind of a breakdown of what this lesson is about. So we've talked in the last lesson about y equals a times b to the x. Um, and then this is kind of an example of how like a necklace costs $250 and increases in value by 2% per year. So our A will be 250, our growth factor would be 1.02, because it's one plus our rate, um, and then X would be our number of years. So that would be our equation. So compound interest and compound compounded continually are the other two formulas that we're gonna be dealing with in this lesson. So you might have seen this before in Algebra 1. So this is A equals P, times 1 plus r over n raised to the nt. So a is your ending amount, p is what we call the principal, the starting value, r is our rate, but we put it into decimal form, just like we did in the last lesson, and then n is the number of times it's compounded per year. So if it's compounded monthly, you would put a 12. If it's compounded quarterly, you'd put a 4. If it's compounded annually, you'd put a 1. Um, daily 365. So those are all different options for n. And then t is your number of years. Um, compounded continuously. So if you see the words compounded continuously or compounded exponentially, you're going to use what we kind of call the PERT equation. So a equals pe to the rt. So again, p is your principal, your starting value. r is your rate and t is time. e is a button on your calculator. So e is, depending on where your calculator is, it's usually next to the natural log button, but it looks like e on your calculator. e is approximately 2.718 and so on. So e is kind of like how we put, we have the value pi on our calculator. e is like that. So E is just a value that you would put into, type into your calculator. Okay, so first example says Tamira invests $5,000 at an account that pays 4% annual interest. How much will there be, ugh, how much will, I can't talk today, how much will there be in the account after three years if the interest is compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly? So we're going to do four different calculations here. So this would be... A equals 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 over 1. So I'm doing annually first, raised to the 1 times 3. I'm going to write all these out, and then we'll put the values in. So the next one will be 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 semi-annually would be 2 raised to the 2 times 3, and then 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 quarterly would be 4 to the 4 times 3, and last we have monthly, so 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 to the over 12 raised to the 12 times 3. Okay, so then we type this in our calculator, being careful that it's exactly like we have it written here. So 1 plus 0 0.04 raised to the third power. So this would be, and this is money, and even though this seems like a common thing, you want to round to the nearest cent. So with money, we don't round to the nearest dollar, we round to the nearest cent. This one came out exact, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, 5,001 plus 0 0.04 over 2, oops, raised to the sixth power. This would be 5,630 and 81 cents. And I would really recommend, since this, um, if we were doing this in class, I would be making you do this with me right now. Um, because even though it seems easy, you're just plugging numbers into your calculator, 
there's a lot of room for error. So I would take a moment and make sure you can type these in and get the answers that I'm getting. And this is also kind of a good opportunity to say, does that number make sense? If you're starting with $5,000 and all of a sudden you have a million, something probably went wrong. And our last one would be 5,636 and 36 cents. Okay, so what I want you to notice from these is that the more often we compound, so like monthly was the most compounding in a year, the more money you're going to get back. So, or like if it's a savings account or something like that that you're investing money in. So the more often you compound, the more money you get. Okay, and that leads us to the next example, which says Regina invests $12,600 in an account earning 3.2 annual interest compounded continuously. So what would be the value of the account after 12 years? Round your answer to the nearest dollar. So this would be, we're going to use the PERT equation. So continuously would get you the most money out of, so we talked about how monthly on the previous example gave you the most. Um, continuously would have got you even more money on that previous example as well. Okay, so we have 12,600E raised to the 0 0.032 times 12. And I realize this is slightly different than the question on the written notes, so... Don't get confused. I think I left off the 600. I changed that to a zero. Okay, so um, 12,600 12, E raised to the 0 0.032 times 12. So this gives us 18,498 dollars and 63 cents. So that's how we use the compounding continuously formula. Okay, and then our last example is how we can write an equation given two points. So it says that Tia knew the number of emails she sent was growing exponentially. She generated a record of the number of emails she sent each year since 2009. What is an exponential model that describes the data? So we have two points here. We have... So I'm going to say, so if you look over here on our picture, we have that in 2015, she sent 1,000 emails. Um, and in 2016, she sent 1,400 emails. So I'm going to say that 2015 is equal to 1, and 2016 would be equal to 2. Okay? So we're going to say 1 Oops, one one thousand and two fourteen hundred to make a um, equation. So then, so this is going to be our x and our y. So what we want to think about is we need to find our b value. So our b value, we're going to take you take your later y divided by your earlier y to find out what we're growing. So this would be 1,400 divided by 1,000. So our growth rate would be 1.4. That would be our B value. Then we want to find what our A value would be. So we would say Y equals A times B to the X. So then we know that it's going to be Y equals A times 1.4 to the X. So then we could substitute in, we could say y is 1,000 when x is 1. So then we could just take 1,000 divided by 1.4 and find out that a is equal to 714. So our equation would be 714 times 1.4 to the x. And so then um, in the written notes, we, the added question there was, how many emails did she send in 2019? So 2019 was the question. 2015 was 1, 2016 was 2, 
2017 would be 3, 18 would be 4, and 19 would be 5. So that means we could say y equals 714 times 1.4 to the 5th power. And we could find out that she sent 3,840 emails. So that's how we would do this if we have two points and you're trying to write an equation for those two points. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.